Hey everyone, this is Mike from vSwitch Zero. So today I've got another board on my test bench here. This is a 430VX chipset board. It's the GMBP56IPS. I'm not sure what company makes this one, but I did find some jumper settings. Um, when I did pick it up, it was an as-is part from eBay, which uh, sometimes I pick up because, you know, you can get lucky on occasion. But I did see that it had this Dallas real-time clock module with a date stamp of 96. So there was pretty much a 100% probability that the system would not boot until I dealt with this. But what I did not realize was that this was actually soldered to the board. And you can see here that right now there's a socket in place, but I did actually desolder this, add the socket, and I picked up a brand new uh, Dallas DS12887A. Um, they still do make these. There's a company called Maxim Integrated that, that makes these now. I guess they bought uh, Dallas at some point. There are a lot of other really cool creative solutions to replace these, but uh, in my case I got this for, I think it was $18, and I didn't really have time to construct anything else. So, hey, it works, and um, I'm going to try it today in this board. So what we have here is a pretty standard setup. It's 430VX. I've got a Pentium 133 in here. This is a retail CPU I've never tried before. It does have a retail cooler on it, so hopefully that works okay. I've got a Trident, or sorry, a um, S3 Verge DX here that I picked up as well, another new card. So I'm looking forward to trying that. I'm just going to change the camera angle here so you can see more of the board. So yeah, it's an interesting uh, video card because it does actually have a 3.5 millimeter audio socket on it. Um, I posted a comment on Twitter uh, when I picked this up and a lot of people were saying, oh, maybe it's for 3D glasses or something like that. But uh, in the end, you can see there's two feature connectors here and I believe there's something called the S3 Scenic, which is a, an MPEG decoder that goes on here. But because it's not only decoding video, it's also decoding audio, it has to have a way to get the audio out and that would go into your audio in on the sound card. So yeah, let's um, get this thing put in and see how it does. Another thing I wanted to mention too, you can see there's this tiny little capacitor, surface mount capacitor here, uh, labeled C48. This was actually busted, it was sort of snapped in half and obviously not working. Um, so I did actually solder on a 100 nanofarad uh, replacement here. It looks like it's just a, an isolating capacitor, um, so I don't think it's anything too much of a concern. I think it probably would have run fine without it, but I decided to replace it anyway. Um, so let's get this Dallas chip installed. So you can see this one here, 21 time, uh, date stamp starts at 21, so it was created this year. And let's see if my socket did the trick. There's not a lot of space around it here, but let's just get it in place. And there we go. So hopefully that works. Uh, we'll know very soon. Now I did actually have this in another Socket 7 board just recently, so I'm sure whatever is on the onboard memory is invalid for this board, so I'll have to find a way to clear it if it doesn't do it automatically. But there's JP5 right here. There's a jumper that's currently not closed, and apparently if I close this we should clear the CMOS, so let's go ahead and try that. Just leave it on there for a moment and take it off again. So far so good. It looks like it's booting up. I noticed the uh, CPU frequency is wrong. That's probably because one of the FSB jumpers isn't set correctly. I haven't checked them yet. The uh, CPU that came with the board was actually A133, so I guess they just had it set wrong. So yeah, that looks right. CMOS checked some errors, so I'm just going to go into the BIOS here. And what I'll do is I'll just set a few things um, to see if the settings are retained. So I won't set the whole date. I'm just going to set the year here and get rid of the floppy drive since I don't have one connected right now. And I'll do an ID hard drive detection as well. Just let that uh, add those settings to the BIOS. Let's just go check if it's stuck here. Yep, so primary master set now. So I'm going to go ahead and save and exit and I'll shut the system down. Okay so I'm booting it back up. It was off for about five minutes. I just wanted to make sure that the settings are retained. So let's see what happens here. Oh 
All right, excellent. Yeah, you can see there's no floppy disk defined. And yeah, it booted up just fine. So next up, let's get that CPU frequency uh, set correctly. Okay, so looking around online, I did find a list of jumper settings that were completely different than what's on the silk screen on the board itself. It does happen sometimes. Boards go through revisions. There's different clock generators that are uh, swapped out. and Yeah, you do find that happens sometimes. So this uh, list of settings you can see is quite different. For a 66 megahertz front side bus, it's actually open, open, open. So I'm going to go ahead here and just remove the jumpers from S1, 2, and 3 so that they're all completely open. Actually, maybe I'll just put them off to the side. There were two that were included here, just in case they need to be changed in the future. So none of them are closed. And JP6 and 7, I believe, are still correct based on the silk screen. So we'll just leave those as is and let's power it on and see what happens. And it shows 133 megahertz now. So 66 megahertz front side bus and a 2x multiplier. So one of the reasons I actually bought this board was because it included this coast module here. So coast is just cache on a stick. And it's basically two more stick uh, ICs of pipeline burst cache that can be added to the system. So there's uh, two up here right now that give it, I believe, 256k. And in theory, I should be able to add this in and get uh, 512 total. So I'm going to shut the system down here and we're going to install it and see what we get. So I believe these only fit in one way. Let me just see. Just double check. I think the keying, yeah, the keying only allows you to put it in one way. So let's go ahead and install this. There we go. And let's boot up the system and see what we get. So if uh, the cache is detected correctly, we should see, yep, 512K in the top right-hand corner there. So that's great. Probably about twice what uh, most people had. So I do have a compact flash card in here. Uh, it's not for this system, but I do have some benchmarking tools. So I'll launch uh, Phil's uh, benchmark pack and we'll check out SpeedSys to make sure that the cache is actually working. Sometimes it'll be detected but not actually be functional, so I just want to make sure it is. Oh, look at that CPU benchmark, 99.99. It's almost like this uh, 133 was the gold standard the whole tool was written around, maybe. I don't know if that's the case, but wow, that's close to 100. But yeah, you can see the cache, uh, the L1 drops off at 8K. Then we have that same consistent speed all the way up till 512K. So. That tells me that the uh, the full 512K of L2 cache is functional, which is awesome. All right, so that's it for today. Um, thanks very much for watching the video. Really happy that uh, just changing out the RTC module breathed some new life into this board, and it's functional once again. I was also happy that I could get this little uh, surface mount capacitor replaced. And so far, so good. The um, Coast module also seems to be working. And I'm going to be doing some more in-depth uh, performance and reliability testing on this board in the, the next few days. I just want to make sure that it's running stable. And uh, I'm also going to try out some higher-end CPUs in here as well, uh, especially uh, an, an MMX uh, CPU. I do want to make sure that uh, the 2.8 volt V-Core is working on this board, which it should be. But yeah, there you have it. Uh, thanks very much. Please like and subscribe if uh, you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks very much.